بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد لقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأذن في الناس بالحج يأتوك رجالا وعلى كل ضامر يأتين من كل فج عميق صدق الله العظيم my dear respected elders and brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us 12 months in which we do various multiple ibadat in order to attain His pleasure. However, there is one ibadah, there is one worship in particular, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, if we are to do this correctly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn to us in acceptance, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn to us in in forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in the Quran وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَىٰ كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's commanding Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam to announce among mankind that they perform hajj. He said that they will, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that they will come to you from, they will come to you by foot and on every lean camel. They will come from every distant pass. Regarding this verse in Tafsir al-Tabari, there is a narration of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He explains and clarifies this verse and he says that when Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam completed the construction of the Kaaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ordered him to announce among the people that they perform hajj. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he's astounded by this. He says, Why should I, how can I announce uh, to the people to perform hajj, whereas I'm living in the desert and there is no one around. But regardless, he said that, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how will my voice reach the people? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says them, he says to the people, he says to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, that you make the announcement and upon me it is, and I will take the responsibility for it to reach every single person. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, he did what he was ordered and he made the announcement to the people. And he said, O oh people, perform hajj pilgrimage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, perform hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it an obligation upon you that you perform hajj. So perform hajj. Now, in, a, in the narration, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he continues and he says that everything in the heavens and everything on the earth heard the call of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And in another narration, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that everything that heard the call of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, the rocks, the trees, the the hills, the mountains, and the lands, they all replied saying, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. They all replied saying, I'm present, O Allah, I'm present. Hajj is a pillar of Islam, and by it coming into Islam, did this religion, did this Islam become complete? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radhitu lakum al-Islam adina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that this day I have completed, I have perfected for you your religion, and I have completed my favor upon you, and I have chosen for you Islam as your religion. This is one of the greatest virtues of Hajj, in where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reveals the verse in which He claims the perfection, in which He says that deen has been completed. He reveals this verse to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while, he has, while Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is performing his final pilgrimage, Hajjatul Wada'a, the farewell pilgrimage. There's a narration of, of Ibn Umar, of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, He said that a Jewish man, he came to him and he said, O oh, chief of believers, there is a verse in your holy book which you Muslims read. And if this verse was revealed unto us, unto us Jews, then surely we would celebrate this day, we would make this day a day of celebration. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he asked this individual, he asked this Jewish man, he said, what verse is this? The Jewish man he replied with the following verse, the verse I just mentioned. He said, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa raditu lakum al-Islam adina. Now, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, I know very well where and when this verse was revealed. He said this verse was revealed to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was standing in Arafah on the day of Jumu'ah. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, here he's trying to tell the Jewish man that you're claiming that it would be a day of celebration for you, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it such that this day is already a day of double celebration for the believers. First off, it's the day of Friday, which is a day, a day of celebration for all believers, and it's a day of Arafah, it's the day of Arafah, which is a day of celebration for all the pilgrims. Through this verse, we can see the importance and we can see the value Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Hajj. 
Now, so far we've only been talking about the greatness and grandness of Hajj, but what is the, the reward, the virtue of a person who performs such a pilgrimage? There's a narration of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in, uh, in Sunan al-Nasai, this, this hadith is mentioned. He says, Al-Hajjatul Mabruratu laysa laha jazaun illa al-Jannah wal-Umratu illa al-Umrati kafaratun lima baynahuma. He said, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Hajj Mabrur, there is no reward for it other than Jannah. And from one Umrah to another Umrah is an expiation for whatever came in between. Now, what I want us to focus on is the first portion of this hadith in which, Allah, in which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the glad tiding to a person who performs hajj mabrur. Now, what is a hajj mabrur? What is a righteous hajj? What, what exactly do we derive from this meaning? What do scholars say about it? Scholars say that hajj mabrur is a hajj in which the pilgrim commits no evil deed, he commits no sin. Some scholars go even further to mention that it's a hajj in which the pilgrim, he took note of every etiquette, he took note of every condition in hajj, while at the same time staying away from every sin and every fault. For this reason, for this reason, the people, they say that hajj mabrur can also be translated as a hajj maqbul, an accepted hajj. Now, this is one of the greatest virtues. This is one of the greatest virtues mentioned by us, mentioned to us by Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And besides this, there are many other virtues and many other rewards, rewards mentioned to us by Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in other ahadith as well. Uh, but what I want to mention now is that Hajj is a fard, it's an obligation, it's a pillar of Islam. And as great the reward is for one who completes it, the, the sin is for the person who had the capability to perform this Hajj, but he refused to perform it and he died in this state. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجِّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and hajj, and hajj to the house of Allah is a duty for mankind which he owes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon whosoever is capable to undertake this journey. And whoever disbelieves, whoever refuses, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent of the worlds. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he places great emphasis, he places great stress on the obligation of hajj on a person who is able, who is capable of performing hajj, who is capable financially and who is capable physically. However, what I want to focus on is the latter portion of this verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ The word kafara can refer to two individuals. It can refer to a person who disbelieves in the obligation of hajj, in which case he would be considered a disbeliever. Or it can refer to a person who refuses to perform the obligation of hajj. Now in both cases, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving a great warning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is dissociating Himself from this person. He is separating Himself from this person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta is claiming that He is independent of whatever this person does. He is independent of His a'mal. He is independent of, what, uh, of everything and anything. And in this case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is separating Himself from this individual. And how great, how, and how can a person survive? Uh, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has separated himself from. This person will surely be destroyed. How pitiful and how foolish is this individual who had the opportunity, who had the capability to perform hajj, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to attain unimaginable reward. But in return, what did he choose to do? He chose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he chose to incur the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Hajj is an ibadah, it's a worship, it's an experience which changes the lives of believers. And although, and Hajj is so beneficial, not only for a person who performs Hajj, the pilgrimage, but it is also a benefit for the people who are unable to perform this pilgrimage. In what sense? In the sense that a person can derive the lessons and he can implement the lessons which is derived from Hajj. <coughs> Hajj teaches people about unity. If we see that pilgrims, they come from all around the world, they're of different ethnicities, right? They, they speak different languages, but still everyone uh, dons the ihram, they wear the ihram, and they come solely for the purpose of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see that there is no difference in social status, everyone is equal. We should also implement this into our own lives and we should also see everyone as equals. We shouldn't think of ourselves as superior or we shouldn't think of someone else as inferior. This is one teaching 
of Hajj which we, which we can derive from Hajj and which we can implement into our lives. Another teaching of Hajj which we can implement into our lives is the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submission to the teachings of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we see the actions of a pilgrim, a pilgrim he goes to perform Hajj and he performs Hajj and he submits himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he submits himself to the teachings of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He completes, the, he completes the pilgrimage in the manner taught to us by Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He doesn't question it, he doesn't use logic or reasoning to understand why this is done. Instead, the person, he submits himself completely and this is also the quality of a believer. This is something we should also implement and we should add into our own lives. We should, we should submit to the commands and the orders of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the teachings of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another teaching which we can derive from Hajj is, um, is, is, um, casting aside casting aside the evil desires and the evil thoughts a person has if we look at the process of hajj then if we look into the process of a hajj there is an act which a person does which is known as a rami and in this act what a person does is he throws pebbles at the pillars he throws pebbles at the pillars and he does this for the 10th 11th 12th and 13th day now what does this represent? This represents the person, he's casting aside his evil desires, he's casting aside these evil thoughts which incline him to, uh, to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which inclines him to sin and to commit, uh, to commit sin and displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are some lessons which are derived from Hajj which we should implement into our own lives. This is the Hajj that we should strive to perform. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to uh, perform Hajj Mabrur. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill within us the true understanding of Hajj. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us uh, the capability to attain the virtues and, pro and the rewards that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has promised.